when I was sharing from the prophetic day word that God gave me for today and this week and uh, yeah you can come with me to Mark 12 Mark 12 and I want to challenge you my brother my sister in your mindset today how we see things even when you read through the Bible you can read a lot but ask Holy Spirit to open it up for you amen amen so you say you're a Christian many people they call themselves Christians yeah now then other days we say no you must remember you're a reborn Christian okay as if to say that means you're a true Christian yes when you gave your life to Christ your spirit became reborn and you became a child of God and there's a lot of naughty Christians that I've seen but may God help us to understand the honor the privilege that his name is associated with us and he is willing to put his name with us Christ Christian that in the word Christian it's the name Christ the Son of God saying that when I say I'm a Christian I say I'm associated with Christ and Christ is okay with that Christ believe that's good that I'm associated with him so Christian see it practically different tell your neighbor you need to see things in a different way definitely not uh, difficult no 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 see it practically different hallelujah we can change that later it wasn't him but, but praise the Lord hallelujah so first point is it your business is it your business my brother my sister when you will go in business when you will have a business when maybe you will work with your millions maybe go to a billion or maybe you will have a lot of property maybe you will start your own thing maybe you will be an excellent uh, teacher an excellent professor excellent where in whatever field you will be working or where you are working but my question is is it your business to whom does it belong when God spoke about the kingdom chapter 12 verse 1 Jesus then began to speak to them in parables a man planted a vineyard he put a wall around it dug a pit for the wine press and built a watchtower then he rented the vineyard everybody say rented the vineyard to some farmers and he moved to another place my brother my sister God will entrust you with a lot of things but at the end of the day the vineyard belongs to him the vineyard belongs to him so at a certain day when this man at harvest time verse 2 he sent a servant to the tenants to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard they seized him beat him and sent him away empty-handed then he sent another servant to them they struck this man on the head and treated him shamefully he still sent another and that one they killed he sent many others some of them they beat others they killed what are we talking about Jesus Christ sending the prophets sending the people sending me and you out there but will we have the guts to stand in the name of the master to stand in the name of the king to declare you know the nations does not belong to you a nation willing to die this is my nation and I'm willing to die for this nation die for a specific cause is it the cause of Christ because at the end of the day when you go and you stand before the Lord what you have in your hand is how you lived how you honored him how you obeyed him how you loved him in a, from a place of relationship and that what he entrusted you with it was actually from the beginning his because he enabled you he gave you the talents he gave you the abilities he gave you the what do you call a good word for savvy up here to be able to do that business and to become 
Hello? When you know it's not your business and you are faithful, if you have respect for the owner, you will be faithful. If you respect the owner of the business, you will be faithful. But these guys, they had no respect for the owner of the business. He had one left to send his son, whom he loved. He sent him, last of all, saying, they will respect my son. We're talking about Jesus Christ, that the father sent the son. And he has the faith today that you will respect him. That you will respect him. But the tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. No, come on. Who of us will say, no, no, let's kill Jesus and the inheritance is ours. No, nobody will say that. But for me to have the inheritance, I can use the name of Jesus, but I will not respect him as, as the son of the father. I can use his name and I can speak certain things and I can speak the death over people. And I can destroy that what Jesus wants to do in me. I can destroy what Jesus is doing and wants to do in other people by just putting the curse there the whole time. No, it will not happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will be, we be like that tenants to see what can we get out of this Christian story? You are here. Set a project. When I can do this on the side, okay, that's it. What can I gain out of this Christian story? Don't be like the tenant that beat up others with my compromise, with how I can stand with other people and compromise and lead them into temptation to be in the flesh. And actually, you are destroying what God wants to do in that person next to you. That is for families, with families where there's issues. When somebody has an issue with a brother or the uncle or the auntie or this one or that one. Issues with nations, issues with people at your workplace. And with the issues with the people at your workplace, when you open your mouth, are you destroying what God wants to do in those people? Don't be like that, those tenants. Hello? What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and kill those tenants. They will be destroyed and give the vineyard to others. Haven't you read the passage of scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the corner stone. Let it be the basic foundation, the point of reference in your life. Jesus Christ. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. What are we talking about? My brother, if you can see the sun as marvelous in your eyes, in your business, what is marvelous, excellent in your business, in is the presence of God. It says it was marvelous in our eyes. So you can be pathetic if you want to be pathetic. Nobody here, in Jesus' name. Or you can walk in excellence. But you cannot walk in excellence. You can walk a pathetic lifestyle. Or you can walk an excellent lifestyle. But excellence is only found in Jesus Christ. So when, when you say, no, I want to go for excellence in my business, in, in whatever I do, wherever I am involved with, allow God to work in you and when the fire is in here then the robbies come out you know you put the fire there then the snake come out when God put the fire in your life you will see the snake you will see some snakes coming out that you won't believe that you get such attitudes not one of you just me I don't know but may God help us then to understand the authority in the name of Jesus to trample on snakes and that is some snake rubbish that was there in the corner of my life. And I never knew that I could have that type of thing. You find it when people will watch a certain movie. They will be awake. But boy oh boy. Just to start to speak about the word of God. Then that sleepiness come over that man. He's like a demon. <laughs> come over that man. 
No, 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 no. Not, not anymore, any money. Anybody want to <laughs> suddenly open up their eyes? What I'm saying, God has excellence for you. God is trusting you with his name. He gave you everything, my brother. And if you can see what he sees, it will be marvelous. You will find him in your business and it will be marvelous. Your business will be marvelous. Your, your work will be marvelous. Your dream of what you want to become with your, with your job and with your calling, it will be marvelous. It will be excellent. Tell your neighbor, it can be excellent. Just to sit up straight there, thank you. Right. Are you with me? Point number two. Is it your money? Ask your neighbor, is it your money? What are we talking about? The second point in the scripture, verse 13 to 17. It's about paying Caesar what is his and paying God what is his. Verse 17. Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. When you pay your tithe, when you pay taxes to government, it's not you doing them a favor. You're doing it because God says it belongs to them. So if you don't pay the tax, you don't pay your tithe, you are the thief. Because that money didn't belong to you. It's your money. Make sure. So when I get my salary or somebody give me a, a, a billion rand, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. But with that then, I need to hear, God, what are you giving to me and what is yours? Because first of all, I don't touch this money. I don't touch what I, what I see there unless you release it to me because it's not mine. Are you with me? So you want to do business in five different ways. But with every one, you need to hear from God. With this business, what will be the outcome come of this? Will this be for my wife and my mother-in-law? And then when you get a 10 rand profit, you give it. When you get 10 million profit, you also give it. You're with me? Hallelujah. But you find out from the Lord... With some businesses, no, 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 we first want to see what's coming out and then we decide. Some business you do with God, you and God decide together, for what is this business? For what is this business? And then you will see the outcome. But it can be beautiful. It can be beautiful. But work with it, that what God has entrusted to you. But you know sometimes when people get money in their hands, suddenly... There's some attitude that changes. And then you need to deal. You cannot believe what, what thoughts are coming up in your mind. And suddenly there's something. Something is there. <sighs> so in the time of my life when it was really, really, really rough. Sometimes for a week without food. I would come in church and then uh, we get to the offering time. say, God, what must I give? And I hear the voice, everything that is in the wallet. And I wonder what is everything that's in the wallet. Sometimes, well, at least a few. But, and some other days I thought, let me hear before going to church, you know, and leave the wallet at home. Says, God, what do you want me to give? Give me the amount. What I'm just saying, allow God to be in control. Allow God to be in control. I don't know if I shared this one. If you heard it before, just look holy and smile. I was driving there at the showgrounds. What's that? Curie Avenue. And um, it was for two, three days, no food. And somebody just came and said, God said to me, I must give you this money. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I was in the car. And you know, it's sometimes it's dangerous to praise the Lord. And I was praising God, and as I was focusing on him, he was speaking to me. And so when he spoke to me, he said to me, that's not your money. You need to give all that money to the lady in that car driving there. I thought, what now? 
So I had to follow this lady. And I said, God, she's in an okay suburb. Well, well, what's the problem now? So when she stopped, I stopped very far and said, don't worry, don't worry. She said, oh, thank you. <laughs> I said, no, I just need to give you something that God said to me, I must give you. Came there and just, she, she just started to cry. Long story short, they as a family were providing for a family that had nothing. And so once a week they would go there and this very small these kiddies would like with this, these eyes, the aunties bringing food money. And then my husband said, we're not going to support them anymore. If you're going to give them money or food, there's going to be trouble in this marriage. And she had to go there and face this family and tell them, sorry, I cannot bring you anything. And she saw these eyes of these kids hungry and she had to walk away she could give them nothing and she was in this car and she was crying out to god and say god this is wrong this is not right and while she was crying out to god i was praising the lord and he spoke to me and said take that money and give it to her so we went to the husband and i explained to the husband what happened and i said most probably because of this through this supernatural way that God provided, God wants to tell you guys that he's challenging you to still support that family. And that he will provide for you. He will, he will bless you. But there's is still a season for you to provide for them. And the husband saw that he understood that and said, no, okay. We will see how we can help them to find a job, but we will provide for them. What I'm saying is, my brother, that was at a time that I definitely didn't want to sow something. Hello, I'm on my way to buy some food. Come on, man. Have a heart, you know. I'm not talking to the Lord. I'm talking to you. And I'm just saying, God will challenge you at the most ridiculous times. To, just to make sure your heart is with him. He's jealous that your heart is with him and not with the money or not with the, that provision will give me future. God will give you a future. Amen. Yes. Allow him, man. Okay. Is it your business is your money. Number three. Is it your people? Mark 12, verse 18 to 27. Now that is a, a little bit, not a difficult one, but an interesting one. It's about the resurrection. Now in the old days, luckily not now anymore. In the olden days, husband and wife, if the husband would die and they have no children, then the brother must marry that wife also and give her children and so this story here they said to jesus jesus uh, the sadducees what must happen in this case if there's a married couple the guy he dies the brother marries he dies no children the third brother must marry her dies fourth fifth sixth seventh now there were seven husbands and no children now they get to heaven Whose wife is this lady? <laughs> Interesting question. And then God says, you don't understand scriptures. Because in heaven, it will not be about first that people. The people does not first of all belong to you. Yeah, but I would love to know my wife and my husband in heaven. You will. You will know your parents, your children. Your, you will know the people. All to be handsome and beautiful and everything. You yes and uh, and that's good <laughs> but the focus will not be that the focus will be so awesome how they belong to christ how they belong to christ and i challenge you young men young women if you have respect for the lady and know that she belongs to christ you cannot just touch her you can go in the dark and you can have this flirting in the dark. You can do this if you think she's just some other like, some other thing that you can for your flesh and for your whatever. Because first of all, you don't have respect for yourself. Now you don't have respect for the lady. Lady, you want the guy that doesn't even have respect for himself. Never mind respect for you. Why will the lady give herself to any guy? Because he has no respect for herself. She don't allow the man to touch her. But if you understand 
that you first of all don't belong to yourself but you belong to him then you cannot take just take your body and give it to some other guy that is actually quite not sick but really a form of adultery but so if you belong to Christ that lady belongs to him we did a marriage yesterday and what happens in marriage the man in your life is giving you to a second man that's on the day of your marriage the man in your life has a role model Manier, mister he's telling you you can take that lady but remember she belongs to me it's not first of all your wife it's first of all the bride of Christ and you have respect for her because she belongs to the heart of heaven she belongs to the king of kings the king of kings married her who the heaven or who the hell are you to do with her what you want to do according to your flesh she's not an animal for your flesh but if you f meet those guys ladies yeah you just give them a holy punch you know in the face okay go for it <laughs> no what am i saying may god help us that we understand you don't belong to yourself you were bought with a price you were bought with the blood of christ you cannot do it don't treat yourself cheap and don't treat that lady or that guy cheap as if they are cheap rubbish coming came from a dustbin or something no they came from the heart of the father they were born in the heart of the father and you treat that lady and that guy in that way but first of all if you choose to have respect for your own life are we with one another so at the end of the day he says no in heaven it will not be like that but you know when you can see one another today with respect that's the type of way that you will see one another that day because who you are what you've become whatever crown you will receive in heaven it will be to lay it down before the throne of christ whatever you've accomplished with christ in christ and for him that crown will be that day to lay it before his feet the 24 elders revelation says the 24 elders at the throne how many times the word in revelation says they would bow down and lay their crowns before him the king of kings the lord of lords may you that day have that crown of what god has done in your life through your life and with your life and how you received his grace even if we messed up that we will run back to him and through his grace have an excellent future tomorrow so that we can lay that crown before his feet amen, amen. as an expression of worship for eternity so it end of is it your people it end of with in the resurrection god said to moses i am the god of abram isaac and jacob and but he says jesus said he's not the god of the dead he's the god of the living abram isaac and jacob didn't really die hello they just went through into eternity so how you see one another we need to understand how to grow amen in how to see one another and how we belong to christ and how to respect one another he said in verse 27 he is not the god of the dead but of the living you are badly mistaken may we not be badly mistaken in how we look at one another but respect one another deal with the rubbish issues in your heart with people because you just know that's why you are flirting with rubbish in yourself it's not you have an issue with a person you have an issue with the rubbish in your own heart i'm talking very straight i don't know but but please we must get into the place you are not a dustbin for all the rubbish don't throw all the rubbish in your life okay and you think you have an issue with a person you have an issue with yourself don't treat yourself as a rubbish bin amen and then we see verse 28 is it your love ask no they don't ask the person next to you rather not <laughs> is it your love okay what are we talking about 
there's a guy come again to Jesus. Say, what is the greatest commandment? He says, no, that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart, your strength, your mind, everything. And then that you will love your neighbor as you love yourself. Are you with me? You cannot love God with your own love, with your emotional love. And sometimes love is a, is a dangerous word because we are afraid we're going to get hurt. We have the fear of rejection. We have the fear and all those rubbish. But you know, you cannot deal with the fear. You cannot deal with the rejection. You cannot. But the love of God will deal with it. When you put the love in here, the love of God will drive out all fear. But then you need to deal. And not the fear to get hurt. The fear of rejection. The fear that if I put my heart out there and I love, <sighs> what will happen? So whose love it is that you will interact with? First of all, it will be God. You cannot love the Lord your God with that love. That love is rubbish. That love needs to be crucified with Christ on the cross. That love is manipulative. That love is selfish. That love is lust. At the end of the day, is lust. So you lust after, after the woman or the guy. I'm not talking more to the young guys. You know. but, but in that, with that lust, you will just destroy that person. Because any baboon, animal, can lust after another one. But you know, then you find even animals and, and eagles. And eagles... They are faithful to one partner. You find even animals and bear, birds that are faithful to one partner. That's amazing. So don't live like a... You don't find a rubbish animal. Like some other animal. God created them. Okay. Are you with me? Achas jylle nog hier, man. Asa, please. Okay, so what are we saying? How you can love. It's not your love. First of all, the key, you need to receive his love. The day that you gave your life to Christ, what happened? You realized God loved me so much that he gave his son. And you received in Christ Jesus, you received his love. When you receive Christ, you received love. Because God is love. So the fullness of who God is as love is in your spirit. It's living in you. So you need to, from your spirit, take that love and let it impact your soul. Let it have an impact on the hurt in your soul, the disappointments, the negativity, or the judgment, or whatever can put you down. Let the love of God set you free. Amen? Allow that. Because only then you can love the Lord your God. With what? With the love that he gave you. With his love, you love the Lord your God. No other way. No other way. There's no other way that you can love the Lord your God. Amen. So with interaction between you and Christ, that interaction of, remember your high five. Romans 5 is 5. He's the Holy Spirit that will pour out the love of the Father in your spirit. Remember, everybody say high five. Okay, if you want to become high, but the high, that's not the high that we're talking about. The only high that you can become is on God's love. Amen. It's poured out by the Holy Spirit in your heart. And with that, God gives you the, the biggest, greatest commandment of your whole life. And that is, love Him. With that, what He gave you. God says, with the passion that I have for you, with that same passion, I want you to love me with a pure beautiful love that i have for you i want you my child to love me with that same passionate beautiful love and then god says if you can do that now you need to love your neighbor but only as you love yourself god says then take that passionate beautiful love that i have for you and love yourself with that love Love yourself with that beautiful, passionate, pure love that I have for you, your father says. And if you can do that, the overflow of that is, you will be able to love your brother and your sister. You will be able to love your wife. You will be able to love your husband, even though you feel you want to slaughter him. You will be able to love him. You will be able to love those others. And many times, 
when those people are in your life and you feel you you are so irritated just when you hear that voice not one of you guys but other people maybe out there sometimes they're even sent by God because he wants you to restore your passionate pure beautiful relationship with him in love now he's showing you how there's still issues in there in here because you struggle to love others why because you struggle to love yourself why because you struggle to love God why because you didn't receive that beautiful love that he has for you he will never ever ever stop loving you you know what the hurt of his heart is that for everyone in hell even he Jesus died for each one of them but they decided to turn their back on the manifestation of God's love through the cross may God help you to understand that every form of love in you must originate from him amen right number four no that was four number five is it your Jesus mark 12 verse 35 to 37 what are we talking about yeah, we can easily say my Jesus my Lord he's my Lord he's my Jesus what are you saying you are associating with him but it's not he's not your Jesus let me talk about that illustrate that with Nazareth where Jesus grew up oh man just this man says he's the son of God he's not our Jesus he's walking around for a, a one year around and saying no he's the son of God but we know for 30 years from when he was born up to the year when he became 30 he was our Jesus in Nazareth the son of Joseph Jesus the son of Joseph we know he's, he's excellent we know he's he's doing great things for other people yeah I know he's a wonderful 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 Jesus but he's our Jesus became so familiar with Jesus and the name Jesus you can come be so familiar with sitting in a sermon and wara 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 so familiar with oh, I'm supposed to read Bible and I'm speaking to the Lord and telling my issues and what 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 I can be so familiar with him that God can do absolutely nothing in your life it's not like they didn't know him it's not like his name was not on their lips but in such a familiar way that actually it was the son of Joseph not the son of God he doesn't belong to you he belongs to the father he himself the son of God and he himself even God in the Trinity and with that there's a certain respect that I have for him that when I use the name of Jesus oh hell and the enemy and the flesh they must they must use that name in a very wrong way ah we talked about this a thousand times but maybe I can illustrate with some of the new guys that are here when we had to get the permit to have a school on farm ground oh, it was a three-year process and then in the end of the day I need to go and sit with some authorities local authorities and the, the guy that must make the, some of the final decisions you know he was like sitting there yeah we must do this thing yes, yes. you've heard that before sure, yes, yes I just said no this is not gonna happen like this but every second sentence so by the third time he said yes that's my Lord and then he said yeah do you know he lo how he loves you then he says and like, yes yes he's, he's, he's gonna speak to you tonight so I was carrying on like it wasn't like three sentences and he stopped you know he was going like 20 sentences 30 sentences before you realize you know something but you must use the opportunity not a, you cannot say that you're gonna burn in hell no <laughs> hear from the Holy Spirit how you must deal with the situation because that Jesus you have respect for that name but hell and the enemy knows that has the name above all names that's why a swear word is not Muhammad or Buddha or atheist or or baboon you come from a baboon you know 
But because hell and the enemy knows there's only one name above all names. That, that's why the name must be taken down so that it's like the son of Joseph, not the son of God. That name does not belong to you. It's his name. Let him be the son of God. And live with him in such a way that you know God is in my relationships. God is in my dreams. God is in my business. God is in my finances. Amen. Amen. Let's go for that man. Okay. Number six. There's only seven points. Number six. Is it your image? Is it your image? Okay. Mark 12, 38. What are we talking about? 38 to 40. It's about the Pharisees. And they are so smart out there. They like to be greeted in a certain way. They have all these robes. You know. And they are, and they're doing these prayers out there openly. I don't say you mustn't pray openly. I think it's a good idea. In America they did it. Where they said no. You know. It's legally. In Europe and in America and some of these places. It's legally to believe you come from a baboon. But it's illegal to say that you come from Christ. When you believe you come from a baboon, then everybody's neutral. Then there's no religion. So they, we cannot stand for a religion in schools. What utter rubbish. We cannot stand for a religion in school. But you need more faith to believe that you come from a baboon than to believe you come from God. Just so by the way. <laughs> because if you come from a baboon, why are they not still people come halfway from baboon? Half man, half baboon at this stage. Or three quarters baboon and one. Okay. You cannot say that about your wife or your husband. But three quarters baboon and one quarter man. No, 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 no. But what am I saying, my brother? Why the name of Jesus cannot be mentioned in the schools? Because hell knows hell is coming. They know that that's the eternal destiny so what time the demon can have in you and with you in fellowship or as a house they know their future is locked up forever in hell but don't waste your life here on earth please don't waste your life your 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 wrestle is not against flesh and blood it's against the evil spirits the demonic forces stand in christ because you have everything in him you have everything in him. The victory is already in you. Amen. So what image do you have? You have overcome. 1 John 4.4 4. You have overcome my children. For greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. You have overcome. Not you're going to overcome. You have overcome. You have already the victory in you. You're already a victor, not a victim. Because Christ is in you. That's why Romans 8 also. You are more than conquerors. Because he conquered everything. I see you me. Tell your neighbor you are excellent in Christ. Okay. And the last thing about image. If we say, what image do you want to have? My brother, my sister, you must, you must have an excellent image. Why? Because somebody said, let us, let us, let us make man in our image. Father, Son, Holy Spirit said to one another, let us make man in our image. Be involved with what Father, Son, Holy Spirit is doing. Be involved with their business. Because God said, I have heaven, I have everything. But I want somebody to have the same beauty, the same quality, the same passion as that, what I have. And I want to relate to them. But I want them to have the same beauty that is in me. The same passion. The same quality. The same excellence. The same splendor. I want them to have it. And that is through the blood that you can have it. And more and more and more our life can become beautiful. But God won't want you like a robot to respond. That's why he gave you the free will. And that we will learn on earth. A certain relationship that we know in heaven. We are not there as robots. We made a certain decision. On earth. Through the grace of God. To have a response. To him. As God. Are you still with me? Give me just five minutes. Please. 
Right. Number seven, is it your performance? Is it your performance? Mark 12, 41 to 44. What is your performance? There's a guy that throw in, uh, you know, a million dollars at the offering in the offering basket. There's some, uh, some ladies is throwing in a thousand dollars. And then there's an old lady throwing in two small pennies. A penny, as what in Engels. I don't know. Two small coins in the offering basket. And Jesus says, she has given more. She has given. They gave out of the abundance. She gave everything she had. Doesn't mean every time you must just give everything that is in your wallet. It means he looked at the heart. And it wasn't a, a shame to bring. What you can bring to the table. What you can bring financially. What you can bring with your talents. What you can bring with your time, with your intellect, with your passion, with everything. Wherever you are in the world, what you bring. Let it be an honor and not a shame. But just do it with your whole heart. It's not about your performance. You bring it because you acknowledge that the performance was through Christ on the cross. Because you have nothing to brag about in what you have. No problem with the two billion. Hello? Or the two pennies. If you have the two coins or you have the two billion. Life is all about that you know what I have is because of the performance of Christ on the cross. If you have your properties and you have two billion strong, if you could have the capacity not to use the root of all evil, greed, but to focus on money. If God can allow to protect you in his jealous love against greed, against the greed, hello? That you will have a pure heart towards him. He can trust you with that. But as long as at the end of the day you will say, but for the grace of God. And I will boast, like Paul said, in nothing else. This man is powerful, man. This is the apostle. This man is the man writing two-thirds of the New Testament. And, but still, he says, I can boast in nothing else except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. I will brag about his performance. So if you have your two billion or your two coins, brag about the excellence performance, the excellent performance of Christ to do the cross. God, come and help us. We trust you for that. We trust you, Lord, that you will just come and do a great, awesome work, you know, through our lives. God, I pray for every man, every woman here, that we will come into the place to see our lives in a practical way, but to see differently. To see differently. Change our perspectives, Lord. We trust you for that, please. God, we give back the business that belongs to you. We will not steal from you. Help every man, woman here. That we will know what to do with the five loaves of bread, two fish that you gave us. That we will hear your strategies. God, that we will not curse your people. God, but that we will respect them and see them in Christ. But also our own lives. Forgive us for not respecting our own lives. In how you gave and what you gave us. Thank you for your awesome love. That in your love all fear are driven out. That we will be compelled by your love. That your love will work. That we will not deal with fears. But that your love will deal with the fears. As we honor your love. Help us to truly love you. And then how to teach every man, woman in this place how to love themselves with the quality, excellent love that you have given us. Jesus Christ, forgive us for not always respecting you by using your name, even sometimes for goodies. Or however, Lord, forgive us for watching that movies where your name is used in vain, but we are just okay with it and just carry on. God, I pray for every man, woman in this place that we will have such a respect for your name because you are the son of God, not the son of Joseph. Thank you, Lord, that we are made in your image, but God, we messed up so much of, of that image, but we stand as ambassadors of Christ to show forth who you are. I pray for every man, woman in this place that where they are involved with, where you plant them, where you've placed them, Lord, that they will be the practical Bible for so many millions in the world that will not read a Bible.
but in the nations that the church will rise to show the Bible, to show the living word, to demonstrate through their lives. Help us by your grace. And lastly, yes, Lord, thank you. It's not our performance. Yes, God, we want to live accurately because we love you. But thank you, God, that we can give you all the glory that whatever we had through success is because of the Christ, of, of Christ dying on the cross, because of the excellence of your offer given through the cross. God, and even if we've messed up, that we know through the cross of Christ, tomorrow can be a new opportunity as we respect your forgiveness, as we come with true repentant hearts, Lord, before you. Purify our hearts through your blood and through your fire. We trust you for that, for every man and woman in this place, and that we will walk with a beautiful, beautiful, excellent lifestyle in Christ Jesus. We belong to you, Lord, and we cannot mess up what belongs to you. Teach us how to live with respect because we are your property. You bought us with a price. Thank you for that and I pray that you will guide us in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen.